Good question. Yeah. It is okay if you use graph paper. Any kind of paper will be all right. That's fine. It is. It helps you graph in like because if you graph try to graph like on the square graph paper in R3 it doesn't work. I really do like some graph paper. It's very high quality. So I'm gonna I don't have a handout for the quiz. I'm just gonna write the question on the board. Question or questions, it might be multiple questions. <clears throat> to be one hundred percent frank with you, I'm about to invent the quiz right here and right now. Okay. I forget how long the syllabus is. I, I, I'm allowed to give you for this. Um, probably like 10 minutes. So let's say you're given a vector. So here's number one on your quiz. Let's say your vector is equal to 3, 7, 2. Fine the unit vector associated to this vector. Okay, that should keep you busy for a little bit. Oh, and number two, prove your answer is indeed a vector of unit length.
So this quiz will have three questions on it. The last question is describe this following region in R3. You may use words, you may use pictures, you may use pictures and words. <clears throat> A carefully described situation with words is sufficient though. And I'm going to give you about six more minutes. So here on the syllabus, it says you get 15 minutes for the quiz. So given that, 
you have another six minutes remaining. And we're supposed to do it at the end of class, not the beginning, but what do you young kids say? YOLO? <laughs> YOLO. How about Yoko, the only quiz once? About two more minutes remaining.
All right, pass those up. Problems weren't, you know, I believe they were able to be done in 15 minutes. What did you guys think? All right, that's good. I don't want to give uh, something that won't be able to be easily done in 15 minutes. So. All right. Yeah. Let's get to going. What I can do for homeworks and quizzes and tests and whatnot is what I'll do is I'll give you your paperback with a grade on it, okay? And then I'll upload a key. Although this class is so small, I may critique directly, but usually I teach classes that are like 100 people and stuff like that. I don't really have time unless, I hire, unless the department gives me a grader to, uh, you know, go through every step of your calculation and show you, oh, this is where you miss your minus sign or whatnot. That's highly time intensive. So what I typically like to do is create a solutions key, just how you do it, and then mark off points based off of how close or how far you deviated from the solutions. Clearly, there's more than one way to do a problem, right? That's the beauty of mathematics. There is always another way to do it. So you may have done it in a different way than I did. So if I notice you did that, of course you're going to get credit. Right? Of course. And let's say you tried it the other way and you messed up a minus sign. At that point, I'm going to have to try and give you some extra partial credit for your attempt. So <clears throat> you realize with me, um, the way I teach and run a class is just like the, my personality as a human being. Laid back, chill, lots of grace. I want you guys to be successful. I want to empower you. I want to teach you as much math, and I want to install in you a, an appreciation for how beautiful and powerful and applicable mathematics is. So I'm definitely on your side. I'm not here to like make this class super hard and like really difficult and have you jump through hoops, claiming hoops and stuff like that. No, but at the same time, I do want to make it challenging so that you grow. And at the same time, um, <clears throat> I will include extra mathematical details that won't be on the test, but will enrich you. And if you understand that stuff, if you strive to understand this course in mathematics at that level, then it will help you on the test and it will help you on the homework problems. It will, it will. Just because proofs of, let's say, Y A cross B Just because of proof of why the, the cross product right here is equal to this determinant won't be on your exam, it doesn't mean it won't increase your understanding to understand how, why, how is that true, okay? So that's why I do things. I'm a mathematician and mathematicians, we just wanna know why, down to the most detailed explanation possible. So, um, that's what I want to in install in you guys. Because if you have that math mathematician mentality when it comes to math classes, you will understand it front and back, okay? You don't need a front and back understanding to get, let's say, an A in this course, which is maybe what everybody is thinking about. I just wanna get an A, you know? But no, yeah, you don't need that kind of level of understanding to get an A, no. Uh, you just need to know how to compute something like this, for instance. But having that level of understanding will not only allow you to be increase your chances in this course, but also it'll help you think critically about everything in life. 
all problems with, with regards to any kind of field. Maybe some of you guys are like in engineering and whatnot. It'll help you in your engineering, okay? Maybe you guys, some of you guys are math ed. It will help you in your math ed, okay? So without further ado, let's talk about this right here. We'll say A1, uh, we'll say A is A1, A2, A3. We'll say B is B1, B2, B3. Okay, so the way we calculate the cross product of, a, of two three dimensional vectors is using this determinant. And I derived to you what the component wise answer is. And here is the way you can do it by determinants. What you do is you say I times a determinant right here. So uh, sometimes actually, this means determinant. Now who here knows what a determinant is? Have you guys taken linear algebra? Oh, who here knows what a matrix is? So everybody knows what a matrix is? Okay. A matrix is, you know, something like this where you have entries, x1, x2, y1, y2, stuff like that. Okay. Ooh. It's a good thing I just didn't assume things. All right. This is a matrix with these brackets, okay? This just means this is the matrix. If I write lines, this means it's the determinant of such matrix. Okay, the determinant of such a matrix and the determinant of such a matrix is this quantity right here. You multiply the upper left by the bottom right and you subtract from the upper right multiplied times the bottom left. It's, you know, I know what you're thinking, what the heck, like why is that even important? Well, determinants have geometrical significance. And I'll have some YouTube lectures on why this has any kind of geometrical uh, significance. But at, right now, just know that the determinant of a two by two matrix is like this. So over here, when I decompose a three by three matrix into two by two matrices, I put an I here and this column and this row, we ignore. We ignore. So what, what, what is left is this A2, A3, B2, B3. Seems arbitrary, but there's geometrical significance to all this. Then, it doesn't seem obvious right now, but it's a consequence of a cross product between uh, specific basis vectors. We write negative J. And now this two by two determinant will be when we cover up the row and the column for J. So it looks like a T. We cover it up and then we write what's remaining, that A1, A3, B1, B3. Okay. Next, we do it again. We do the same thing. But this time it's a plus. So this is the blueprint. You'll get I two by two minus this minus is always showing up. It's a consequence of a cross product between two basis vectors and the calculation and the derivation. So this is always there. Then you say plus K, K hat. And now we cover up, oh, I forgot the hat on the K. We cover up the row and the column containing K hat and whatever remains, that's what we put in our determinant. That A1, A2, B1, B2. Okay. Then we do this process right here, once we're done with that. So over here, this becomes A to B3 minus B to A3 I hat. See, I just did that determinant thing right there to your right in the box. Minus A1 B3 minus B1, A3, K, uh, J hat. Okay, just took the determinant of this guy. 
and then plus time to take the determinant of this final two by two matrix a1 b2 minus b1 a2 a half so right now this just seems like some arbitrary mathematical game we're playing but i assure you it has geometrical significance meaning all of these rules are based off of setting up two vectors in three dimensional space. Finding the cross product means that there needs to be a mutually perpendicular vector emanating out of the vertex of these two vectors. And we find out that its components are dictated by this right here. And remember at the end of class, yesterday, not yesterday, but last class, I told you that component wise, our final result is A2 B3 minus B2 A3 comma A1 B3 minus B1 A3 comma A1 B2 minus B1 A2 in bracket notation, right? If you guys go back in time, let me see my notes here. A2 B3, oh yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the textbook um, talks about this being a, a useful thing. Did you guys do determinants in physics? So how much physics have you guys taken? Just let me know. It's been a long time. Physics one. But I took you know, physics mechanics and electricity one too. Oh, you guys didn't take engineering physics one and two. I took AP physics and those two. Oh, AP physics. Did they talk about torque and cross products? They talked about torque. Oh, okay. I took them on junior year. So oh, so yeah, memories I took, fuzzy. I took, I took them on junior year, so it's been a long time. Okay. Well, no worries. Whatever deficiencies in your memory, I will fortify it. So this is a three by three, make, uh, three by three determinant. We can't do it right off the bat. We have to decompose it into this. And I told you how you do it. So soon we won't have just i, j, k, and random, you know, variables. We'll have numbers, and we'll be doing this with numbers. A one through A three, B one through B three. We'll have numbers associated to them. Okay. And then once we're done we'll get A cross B, we'll have some number here, once we're done, some number here, some number here to create a new vector, okay? Without further ado, let's do that. Yeah, I was first introduced to this stuff, um, I guess simultaneously in Calc 3 and, and um, engineering physics. So, for instance, example, let's say A is equal to this, and B is equal to this. Find A cross B. What is it equal? Well, as we've discovered, I have not proved, I started to prove, and then we ran out of time, that this is the same thing as taking the determinant of this matrix. Now I'll put in the entries for A over here, it's a 1, a 3, a 4. I'll put in the entries for B, it's a 2, a 7, a negative 5. Okay. And then we just do cofactor expansion, which is the fancy linear algebra of uh, reducing a three by three determinant into a sequence of two by two determinants. Okay, so this breaks down to, remember, I hat times, cover up the row and the column of I hat. So all that remains is this box right here, right? So I'll put a 
oops, this needs to be a straight line to, to say the determinant. So three, four, seven, negative five. Okay. Then I put a minus j hat determinant. I now cover up the row and column containing j hat. And what remains is this one, four, two, negative five. I know you're thinking what I was thinking when I was learning this. What in the world? Why is this even important? What is, what is going on? There is a lot of subtle mathematics going on that you will only understand through understanding how it's proof, the proof. So that won't be on the test, but I'm sure you're, you're burning curiosity. Being satisfied would be good enough. Then over here, this is one, three, two, seven. You guys see how this is played? Yeah, simple as that. Then we do the determinant. So this is equal to I hat times three times negative five minus seven times four. So minus j hat, this is times one times a negative five minus two times a four plus our k hat. This is one times a seven minus a two times a three. I'm putting brackets. That's the same thing as parentheses. You guys know that, right? Okay, cool. So I like to switch it up between parentheses and brackets. For some reason, it makes me feel better. But there, this is just a parenthesis, really. <clears throat> okay. It means I is going to be multiplied times this whole thing once we're done doing the order of operations. Okay. So I gets multiplied times what's in here. So this is a negative 15. And the, uh, 7 times 4 is what? Uh huh. Minus j hat. 1 times negative 5 is a negative 5, and then this is minus 8. And our k hat, 1 times 7 is 7, minus a 7 times a 3, that's a 21. So then this is, this reduces to negative 15 plus 28 is what? Well, I think it's uh, 2 times 3. And uh, k hat. And k hat? 2 times 3. Oh, yes, that looks like a seven to me. I put a line through my seven. Thank you so much. Boom. Thank you. Good catch. All right. Thank you. Now, what's uh, 28 minus 15? 13. So this becomes 13 I hat. And what's five minus eight? 13. So it's a negative, and the negative will cancel out with this negative. So it's going to be plus 13 j hat. And what's the 7 minus the 6? Plus a k hat. So this is actually what our a cross b is. And we can write it in my favorite bracket notation, like this. You guys see that? Yes, ma'am. This one? Yes. Good catch. That should be negative 28. Yes, good catch, good catch. So this result will change. This won't be a 13. This will be a, what's 15 minus 28? There we go. And so we'll change this to negative 43. You guys are on a roll today. I love it when my students proofread me. <laughs> I'm pretty bad at mental arithmetic. Not going to lie. Like ridiculously bad. Like my wife's grandma is better at multiplying and dividing and adding and subtracting than me. She'll do it faster than me and more accurate. And I'm like, geez, Louise. I just never found any excitement out of multiplying in my head and whatnot. 
I did find excitement in uh, shapes and fundamental reasons for why things work the way they do. But being able to multiply and divide and whatnot in your head is very important. You know, it's really good. It's a good skill and I'm not hating on it. I'm just not good at it. <laughs> I'm not hating on it. I'm sure you can impress a lot of people at parties if you can multiply and divide big numbers in your head. You know, you'd be the life of the party. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, you know. Pardon me? Yeah, those fun Nazarene parties. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Man, if I had a nickel for every time this stuff here came up. If you had a nickel for what? Every time this stuff here came up. Uh, calc three? Yeah. Is it a big talking point in Nazarene parties? Oh, definitely. <laughs> so, yeah, I had two nickels. Like, which isn't uh, much, but it's weird that it happened twice. <laughs> We're going to find a vector that's perpendicular to the plane that passes through the points. We're going to call this P. It's going to be 1, 4, 6. We're going to call this Q. Negative two, five, negative one. We're going to call this R one, a negative one, and a one. Okay, so let's sit back and think about what, what, what we want to do right now. We want to find a vector, a vector perpendicular to the plane that passes through these points. So these points are on some plane. Like right here. And we want a vector that's perpendicular to it. Right? What kind of a uh, operation do you guys know that creates perpendicular vectors? What kind of operation between two vectors do you know that Given two vectors, whenever you do this operation between these two vectors, it creates a vector perpendicular to those vectors. It's the cross product. That's what we've been doing, right? The cross product does this. But what's weird is we're given points and I need vectors. I need to take a vector across another vector to create this. I've just been given points. I've just been given three points. So a way to do that is to find the displacement vector between one point to another and that point to the other. So PQ displacement vector, what is this? I probably need some more space. And PR displacement vector, what is this? So remember when we do displacement vectors, we do the final entry of this coordinate, negative two, minus the initial entry of this coordinate one. Then we go final of the y minus the initial four. Then we go final minus initial six. Moving on to here, now it's p to r. The final is r, so it's one minus initial one. And this is negative one in the final in the y minus initial four. And then we go final, which is one in the z, minus the initial, which is six. So doing this now, we have our displacement vectors. Now I got to compute these really hard things here. Negative two minus a one is a negative three. 5 minus a 4. Oh, I know. I know that one. That's 1. Negative 1 minus a 6. Oh, that's a negative 7. Hey, guys, I can do these. <laughs> I'm going to need you for the harder ones, though. Once it gets, like, two digits, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm 
I need to like multiply it out on here and then what I, so now this is one minus one is zero. Uh, negative one minus four is negative five. And one minus six is a negative five. So take a look. We've created a pair of vectors. Yes, sir. So we can just take any two pairs of those three points. Like we can make a position vector out of any pair of those. Or does it have to Correct. You can get any you can get any two points on in three dimensions, okay. and you can create a vector going from one to the other through this process. Notice that if it's PQ and we adhere to this order of doing it final minus initial, Q is final, mm -hmm. P is initial, you will then construct a vector from P to Q if you do this. Mm -hmm. But you can also do it from Q to P. You would just switch the order of the numbers and then it would be a vector going that way. Yeah. So here's our situation here. I'm not drawing it in three dimensions, but imagine this is floating in three dimensional space where maybe this is out here and that's in there and this is just right here, you know, something like that. Here's my P, here's my Q, here's my R. What we've, what we've effectively done mathematically here is we've created a vector here, P, Q, and we've created a vector here, P, R. You guys see that? The problem designated to us that these lie on a plane, okay? So whether they're like pointed out or not, we can then connect these points with the plane. So they're on a sheet. So once we've connected them, we know that, okay, a vector through there, a vector through there. What was my original goal? Oh, find a vector that's perpendicular to the plane that passes through those points. So we're going to create a vector here that comes out or it goes in, depending on the right hand rule. Notice that if we do PR cross PQ, the vector will point out at us and focus in the eye. But if we do PQ cross PR, the vector will go into the board. Remember the right hand rule? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. You guys look like, oh wow, can't believe I'm understanding this stuff. <laughs> Oh, you did? Oh, good, 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 good. Yes, wonderful. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, because I don't teach the lab, so I'm, uh, I should, I have access to the documents. I should be going and looking at those. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, all we got to do is take the cross product between these guys. Professor? Yes, sir. Could you move that bag? I can't really see the bottom. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, can't blame you here. See this year like that. Uh huh. Yeah, nothing stops my students from learning. Not even my own backpack. So, to to finish off the problem, all we gotta do is find this vector right here. Once we find this vector we're done with the problem. And we know how to do it now. It's the determinant of I, J, K, the entries of PQ, which is negative three, one, negative seven, the entries of PR, which is zero, negative five, negative five. And then we calculate the determinant, okay? Which ends up equaling I hat, times the quantity, remove the row of the containing I hat, remove the column containing I hat, we just get this box right here. So uh, it becomes one, negative seven, negative five, negative five, minus K hat, uh, whoa, whoa, minus J hat, remove this row, remove that column, I get negative three, negative seven, zero, negative five, plus K hat times this determinant. Remove this row, remove this column. I get negative three, one, zero, negative five. Okay. Then I calculate the two by two determinants and scale by the basis vector. So this is one times a negative five 
minus a negative 5 times a negative 7 minus k hat times, and I will have to delete this right here. Oh, I, I wrote k hat again. I mean j hat. Okay, minus j hat times this determinant. So negative 3, negative 5, minus 0 times negative 7 plus k hat times negative 3, negative 5, minus 0 times a 1. And then we just finalize the computation. This is just i hat times a negative 5. Negative times a negative is a positive, and then this negative makes it a negative again. So this is negative 35 minus j hat times negative times negative is a positive. This just becomes positive 15, and 0 is 0. 0 times anything 0, plus k hat times uh, 15 because anything times zero is zero. So then I gotta just do this part and I'm done. So I can write it in component form. This is negative 40, negative 15, positive 15. That's my vector that is per perpendicular to the plane containing the points P, Q, and R. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's why this mathematics that we're developing is so powerful. Once we develop it, which required proving that stuff, once you've developed it, you could do all kinds of stuff. It's very powerful. It's like creating a machine that now can like do stuff. It's a mathematical machine. Okay. So let's make a note. No. Any non zero multiples of this P Q cross P R would also form a vector perpendicular to the plane. What do I mean by that? Well, it means scale? yeah, it means I can factor out a five and it still would work. Factor out a five out of 40, 15 and 15, it would still work. I can multiply by 100, 400, negative 150, that's it multiplied by 100. So it'd be negative 4,000, negative 1,500 and positive 1,500, that would also create a vector that is perpendicular to this plane. So you guys haven't taken linear algebra? No one in here has taken linear algebra? Okay. Well, you'll be talking about vectors and scaling them a lot in linear algebra. Linear algebra is all about that stuff. All about vector space theory. <clears throat> So again, just to say uh, negative eight comma negative three, three, for instance, this would also work. This would also create a vector perpendicular to the plane containing these, these three points. So what's end up, we only have like one minute left. What's gonna end up happening is I can't assign new homework, right? We're still in this section. Right, so to the quiz and the syllabus is kind of, I wanted to go through a section per class, but it's not happening. So I'm not gonna assign any homework, work on past homework, okay? And if you have problems that were in past homework that you didn't get to do, which you believe that you, had to, you were forced to turn in, turn those problems in and I'll still accept them. Does that make sense? So our last, our last, you know, for 
9.3, 9.2, 9.1. If you have any problems, you weren't able to get in, turn them in and I'll look at them. Okay. The class is over. <laughs>